grid up here on Gardner Strait. There's Garth Tander starting from position one. Neil Crompton mentioned that races two and three will be all about position. On the next row back, it's an all-team Vodafone lineup. Jamie Winkup, the equal championship leader. He'll start from position three. Craig Lowndes, of course, next to him. And we must also make mention of Mark Scaife, who's on the front row alongside Tander after that second in race one. Scaife uh, has a brand new car this weekend, car number 200. There's Lowndes. And here is our circuit. And isn't this a great racing track to determine the outcome of this year's championship? Ten corners, just a tad under four and a half kilometres, characterised by a lot of medium high-speed corners and a couple of very tricky slow ones. Turns four and eight are only 70 kilometres an hour, but one turn that we love to focus on is the one that we call Hayshed. And there it is at turn number six. 220 kilometres an hour in the mid corner and when you've got it right you're about one millimetre from disaster on the outside of the road. Over the years it's certainly caused a bit of chaos and it's a wonderfully rewarding piece of racetrack. Will it reward Toll HSV with another championship? Rick Kelly will hand over the number one at the end of this season. Welcome all our international viewers, our viewers on bigpondsport.com and of course on Seven Network. You're about to see the grand finale come to a complete halt. At the end of today, we will know who will win the 2007 Drivers' Championship. Tanda versus Scaife on the front row. Win Cup and Lounds on the second row. The brothers Kelly, Rick and Todd Kelly, from positions five and six, making up our top ten. Mark Winterbottom and Russell Ingle then we find Will Davison and Greg Murphy who made up spots in race one yesterday. Not a lot of changes in the top ten order. Only uh, Jason Richards was the one who sort of bailed out at the end there. And we talked about the mistake that Jason had. It cost him dearly. And it also helped out Jamie Winkup. There's Shane Van Gisberg and the young Kiwi driver starting from position 14. Cam McConville, super cheap auto racing, or Paul Wheel Racing will close down at the end of today and that's where Jason Richards will start from position 17. He could have been in third. And further to that story, what happened was that when he got down to turn number two yesterday, he wasn't 100% certain as he came out of fourth gear whether in fact he'd gated third or first gear. So to compensate, he kept his foot on the clutch pedal and just ran it in neutral for a moment because things happen very quickly down at turn two. You arrive very quickly, big direction change, a little bit of break. The problem is, when the engine idles on these cars, and in particular his car, the idle speed drops down to about 800 RPM. The power steering doesn't work down there. So it locked up in the steering, so in a moment's panic he then gassed it up, and then the power steering of course came alive and he fired off into the paddock. So he was pretty forlorn about all that at the end of yesterday's play. Brake rotor problem for Owen Kelly, and damage on Paul Morris's car as a result of making contact with Max Wilson at turn eight, which incidentally the stewards looked at and determined that there was no further action to be taken there. Jason Bright, in case you don't know, had a broken gear lever yesterday. That puts him at the back of the field, so quite a few people in strife. John Bauer was given a mechanical black flag for a problem with the rear brake lights, and team owner Paul Crookshank was pretty cranky about that last night because the centre rear brake light, that is the one up in the rear window, was working fine, but they'd been crashed into. That car, Triple One of uh, John Bowers, was crashed into in the opening couple of laps, and of course the rear brake lights weren't working, so uh, he wasn't too thrilled about getting pulled off the track for that one. Big noticeable change at the moment is the uh, hottest condition so far of the weekend. 28 degrees outside, 35 degrees track temperature and the strong northerly wind. It's a complete change from yesterday, so that'll assist them right down the straight. They'll arrive at turn one a lot quicker. They're not aware of it, but it may assist in some slipstreaming for cars that don't necessarily have the pace. Well, Rick Kelly might be out of contention for the championship, but he doesn't see himself out of contention for race two and three. He has a new engine from overnight. Garth Tander, new set of rear springs and a lowered front roll centre for Garth. Jamie Winkup's pit stop yesterday was certainly a feature. It, uh, it took them a second longer than it should have, and due to a stuck wheel, it cost him a potential second place. Now, look for a ripper stop today. They were so hot this year that Roland Dayton says that if they hit the three-second mark from car up to car down, then the six crew get a holiday to Bangkok. They did do 2.9 seconds in Tassie. 
But there's uh, not only a championship on the line, but a holiday now. So Roland Dane certainly knows how to inspire a crew at the end of a big year. Why don't you and I go down there and see whether we can nail it, we get a free holiday. Grant, Grant, we'll meet you down there. I'll race you. OK. Mark Beretta and Daniel Gibson also covering pit lane along with Grant Daniel. Have you ever had a go at it, changing a wheel on one of these things? I can do it in about 25 seconds on a good day. <laughs> and on a very good day, it's hard. Much harder than it might seem. Onboard camera coverage scattered across the field. Cam McConville, his last run, as Matthew pointed out, in the super cheap auto Commodore. He's busy putting together his 2008 plans at the moment. He will have a drive, I can confirm that. A little bit of sad news late yesterday afternoon as well for the man who ultimately finished in second place in race number one, Mark Scaife. Unfortunately, his grandmother passed away yesterday. So our thoughts from V8 Supercar Television and the Seven Network are with the Scaife family today at the difficult time for them. How will Jamie Winkup react? He had a seven point lead coming into race one. It's now level peggings with Garth Tander. He finds himself a couple of spots back on the start grid. It's all about staying in front of the other guy. The Mark, pure essence of racing. Mark Winterbottom uh, had a, a pretty robust uh, battle with uh, Russell Ingle yesterday as well and it bent a steering arm in his car and uh, they also had a little bit too much understeer in the car they haven't quite been able to get on top of this week he's been a little bit quiet compared to recent rounds Winterbottom and of course Stephen Richards had a shocker of a day because he had to tour the pit lane twice because the rear bumper was broken somebody had uh, run in the back of it and damaged it and uh, certainly they're pretty animated down there about that as well So 27 laps, 120 kilometres, 31 starters, as Daniel Gibson mentioned, a big, strong northerly breeze. So that's coming straight down behind them as we look up the main straightaway here. And that will really tip them into turn one. You have to be careful of that because it's massively different to yesterday. We had a stiff southerly both Friday and Saturday. Some people ask us from time to time about the rules at the start. You've got to be stationary as the lights change and those front wheels must be behind that white line. Who will get the jump for race two? Will Scaife give Tander some room? What about row two? Win Cup and Lowndes ganging up together. So off we go for the second race of the grand finale. Rick Kelly in a little bit of trouble and Winterbottom danced around him. Scaife will lead them down to turn one. The two team Vodafone cars side by side. Oh, Rick, very out of shape on the exit of turn one on cold tyres. And Todd Kelly making a move here as well. So Todd Kelly went from sixth up to third to put some pressure on Wind Cup and Lowndes. How's the ride for Rick Kelly through turn one? On the outside, sideways, scary stuff. The hairpin, turn four. Murphy stuck on the outside, pushing sharp by one of the Jim Beam cars, probably Will Davison. Great start by Mark Scaife. I thought for a second that the Triple Eight cars were together. In fact, it was a terrific move from Todd Kelly. Up over Lukey Heights and down to turn eight. They all drive to the centre of the road, just covering each other. In a relatively clean opening lap, it seems. Well, Garth Tander may have lost one position from the start, but it's pretty good signs for the Holden team because he's got an HRT in front of him and behind him now. And already drivers are being counselled for patience. They've only been racing for 100 seconds. Russell Engel up from 8th to 6th. 
almost three wide down there. Little reset of the throttle for Tandon, just waiting for grip to return in the front before he picks it up. Tom Kelly's got some pace. Depends, of course, on how they've decided to run the tyre sets in this opening few laps of race two. Holstery pit stop window opens on lap five. Nice sneaky move from Greg Murphy on Stephen Johnson. Look at this. Serious moment down at turn one. I wondered what was going on there. That is out of control. Escape a monster moment through turn one. How did he survive that? I couldn't work out how the three of them got down to turn two almost locked together. Serious sprint car. He must have arrowed in a bit too quick on cold tyres or the tyres haven't uh, pressured up enough yet. It's wriggled around in the rear. <laughs> I bet his heart rate jumped up. I bet he can just as well. So the first flying lap now. I'd have more than a breeze for that. <laughs> yeah, he's got a little bit of strife going down at Lukey Heights in the right-hander as well. He just uh, pinched the brakes. I'd say that the, the condition of this tyre sets maybe not that flash or they've made a change in the car and it's not, not uh, yielding good pace at the moment. It seems to be just a bit scattered. There's been a couple of mistakes on that lap for Mark. That was a 138.13 for Mark Scape. Three tenths of a second the difference between him and Tanda. But importantly, as I mentioned in the championship picture, Tanda's got cover now. Holden cover, that is. Keeping in mind, we made a fuss about the wind just prior to the start of the race, and they might all be discovering. Look at these two fellas, they've, they've got their combat eyes on again. Yesterday both Winterbottom and Russell Ingle were together in race one. They're together again now in race two. It may be just the question of the conditions being that much different that uh, they're making little blues here and there around the track. Fastest first sector split in fact for Mark Winterbottom. They're not quick at all. That first flying lap of 38-1 that's no pace. Really different conditions to uh race one yesterday as Gibbo mentioned it's not only a strong breeze coming the other direction but also much hotter than yesterday Gibbo yeah it is absolutely it's a, it's a stifle I tell you what Manny the only thing is though there's less flies I think the Northley's blown them away <laughs> just in the HRT garage word is as soon as the windows open expect to see Scafie in yeah maybe uh, onto the better rear tyres and a little adjustment that was Rick Kelly just doing some Morse code on the back of the Jim Beam car Drop the time a bit, 137.59 for Scaife, but Winterbottom has done the fastest. He's in sixth, 137.51. Let's just reset where everybody is. Mark Scaife leads the race. Garth Tander is second, so he's dropped one position from the start. Todd Kelly has gone from sixth up to third. Wind Cup and Lowndes are fourth and fifth, so they both have dropped one spot from the start as well, and Mark Winterbottom Richards. is behind them. He's gone off at turn one as well. So for experienced drivers to be in strife down there at one. Yeah, people like Mark and Stephen have done a million laps around this racetrack and uh, little mistakes down there. There's something going on. Safety car is going to be deployed. There's something going on around the racetrack at the moment. Safety cars on standby. The computers have gone all yellow. So there is something on around the racetrack at the moment. Let's see if this tells some of the stories. Stephen Richards, that's a wild ride on the outside of Turn 1. I remember a few years ago, and Russell Lingle went down there, I thought he was never coming back. I think one of the Team BOC cars is in trouble, as I understand it. Here's the other angle for Stephen Richards. Castrol forward. Good recovery. So the field being brought under control, and here's the reason why. Can't pick the number up. I think it's 12, so it's Andrew Jones, yes. So that will settle down the order a little bit. Where has he done this? Oh, hey shoot. There it is. He, has he gone off on the approach to hey shoot and he's buried a couple of hundred metres back, it looks. Well, that's all. I, to end up out there, that's a wild ride. 
is pretty deep. Mark Scaife leads this race. Garth Tander is in second. Scaife is the race leader from Tander and Kelly. That's Jamie Wincup's worst nightmare. And then Lowndes. And Max Wilson and Paul Morris have come in resolve an issue the compulsory pit stop window is not yet opened interesting to get the view from drivers and engineers after this race as to where the track pace has gone it seems as though the wind direction and the uh, temperatures certainly had an influence Scaife's talking about making a rear roll centre adjustment on his car when he takes his compulsory stop. He doesn't think tyres alone are going to solve the problem. So he's looking to just drop that down a little. The car's got too much point in it at the moment, steering too effectively for the rear. So the order is Scaife, Tander and Kelly. And that is Jamie Wincup's worst nightmare at the moment. Off they go again. The compulsory pit stop window will open on lap five and expect to see people coming straight in. Down to turn one. Doing corner around this southern loop. Good wind cup right on the rear of Todd Kelly. Taking advantage of that restart to lasso him in. And so far, you'd have to say that the play of the day came from Todd Kelly at the start as Russell Ingle gives Frosty a little nudge. And just before they pit, it's a good time to just check what the current championship points are doing. With Tander in second and Wink up two places behind. Okay, Jamie, in this lap, please, in this lap for rear. Copy that. So we can bring Jamie in. We're looking from the front of Craig Lowndes cards, and this is a great shot. You'll see just how much sliding goes on around this racetrack at high speed. That's what hurts the tyres. Jamie's car wriggling over the top, Lukey Heights. So Jamie will peel left and Craig's got a little bit of fresh air then. There he goes. Notice the very different turn in line for Craig Lowndes by comparison to Todd Kelly. Turns in much earlier, runs a little wide on exit. Throws some rocks at Winterbottom. So Scaife went in and Wink Cup went in. That clears out Tander. Todd Kelly and Craig Lowndes. I reckon I, oh, look at a huge moment here for Lowndes, just the same way that Scaife and Richards had trouble down there. Oh, that was very close, and that would have hurt him. So, lacking in car pace, okay, that's why he wanted to come in quickly. Okay, I'm on the HRT car, it's on the HRT car. Nice work, watch your best speed. And again, that's the hard thing. Scaife came into pit lane first. There was nobody else in there, but because the HRT garage is midfield, he ends up getting caught in traffic as they all come around him. That's yeah. right. And Matty, it's a very, very narrow pit lane here. It was just rear. They were talking about a rear roll centre adjustment or the working side and pressurisation at change. Just rears for Scaife in the end, guys. That's a different strategy to yesterday as well, because yesterday they changed the working side tyres on that car. That is the right-hand side. Back to our leaders. Todd Kelly is making sure that he is part of this game plan. Oh, somebody else off at turn one. Jason Richards, so deep. Yeah, the, the, see, there'd be an extra, could be an extra 30-odd kilometres an hour of breeze down there at the moment. It'd be a good 15 knot or more 
win. Oh, oh serious, ugly re-entry there, that one. She's a motocrosser. I'll tell you what, he's done a great job to stay safe. And that's heavy stuff down at turn one. So it's definitely catching a few people down there at the moment. That's uh, amazing. What speed are they in there? On the way in, it's 280 k's before you grab the brake pedal and then across the middle of the corner, about 205 kilometres an hour. The bird's eye view of pit lane from Craig Lowe. And the pressure on the cruise... OK, away you go. Pit lane's clear. ...is enormous. Trish Randall in the air, go to two when you get out there. That was really sharp. We've talked a lot, and they're laying up at Toll HSV at the moment as well. We've talked about the pressure on the drivers. What about the pressure on the cruise? Where does Lowne slot out? Both Todd Kelly and Mark Winterbottom are taking advantage out there to post good times. Courtney was very wide down at turn one that time as well. 37-1 for Todd Kelly. Fast sector split for Mark Winterbottom. So they were laying tyres out at Toll HSV, so I'd expect to see one of their cars in very shortly. Remember, they've got a headwind approaching this hairpin where people yesterday were running off when they had a tailwind from the south. We almost saw Garth Tander come in on the very next lap. They've been, the team has been particularly paying close attention to just how fast Jamie Winkup is on new tyres. He was punching in some very, very solid times and it scared the team because Garth's tyres aren't the flashest, but they are going to hold out for another lap or two while he is in the clear air. Grant, you mentioned at the top of the show that the Vodafone boys have got an extra incentive. If they do a sub three time on the Vodafone car of Jamie Winkup, they're off to Bangkok. They did a 3.3 and on Craig's a 3.2, not yet. 36-8 for Mark Winterbottom on uh, that lap. Jason Bargwana. WPS entry rejoins. What about the wild ride that Jason Richards is this having? Is, this is going to be critical. I think uh, Todd Kelly's made good ground here. He's got a fast car today. So he's popped up in front of these blokes. You can see the pace that he had in the opening lap or two. He was very strong. Very nicely in front too, and Jamie Winkup has managed to round up Mark Scaife. Mm. So Winkup has come back, fought his way around car 200. Remember that um, Scaife was held in the lane for the traffic, and they may have had to spend an extra moment there just with the adjustments they were making. But certainly just easing back into the lane would, was enough to hurt him, so it would have been a half-second or second pause there. Still to complete the picture at the front is Garth Tander, who remains out there. He leads the race. 1.8 seconds is the difference between him and Mark Winterbottom. This will show Wink up. There you go, straight past. That's funny because that's the second time we've seen Mark in trouble down there. And Tander now in. And uh, Winterbottom, meantime, has done the fastest lap of the race. They've been monitoring Jamie Wincup and they say that he's just too quick on his new set of tyres, so the responding toll HSV to come in and change those tyres, but he's going to be put right back into the mix. They've looked at all the computer calculations. He's going to have to dive straight out of pit line and right to the right-hand side of the track to protect his line and lead. Go, go. Burn, he's got plenty of room. Nice calm voice there. Check your line, mate. Watch your line. One pod coming through now. Check your line. So Kelly comes around turn 10. Todd Kelly, that is. Garth Tander exits pit lane. He's got lots of room to move. He takes the race lead back. Todd Kelly second. Jamie Wincup third. It's on. Nice stop from the Toll HSV boys. And, and the words all sounded right. And, you know, calming the crew down so that they're not wound up like tops. It's a good ploy, and the car's got pace at the moment, and that's what they need. But uh, Wind Cup's certainly not out of business at this point. One of the strengths for Team Vodafone this year has been their late race pace at many of the events that we've gone to, as Paul Dumbrell tours the paddock. Still no pace in the racetrack. Fastest lap held by Mark Winterbottom at 36.7.
You know, just doing some investigating on that race pace you were talking about, the consensus here in pit lane is it's the rubber that's been put down by the previous category. Now, using the Dunlop tyres that we do in the V8 series is not compatible with that rubber, so it's slowing the cars up. That's why you're seeing speed issues and grip issues at the moment. Now, Tim Edwards from Ford Performance Racing tells me that'll take about 15 laps to get the Dunlop rubber down, and then we'll see the pace come back into this race. It's funny you mentioned that because yesterday there was a bit of speculation about that as well and I raised the point that the historic touring cars um, have preceded the V8 supercars on a couple of occasions and, and each time it appears as though it's hurt their pace. This is Rick Kelly. Oh, go. Plenty of exiting traffic, mate. You're going to be in a gaggle. Protect your line, protect your line. It's not an easy rejoin either. Come over the hill here. Slots in behind James Courtney. And in front of Will Davison. So Mark Winterbottom leads the race. Stephen Richards, Jason Bright and Owen Kelly. The others yet to pit. On corrected order, it's Garth Tander. This battle that you're looking at, Tanda, Todd Kelly, Jamie Wincup, Mark Scaife, Craig Lowndes. Rick just defending here from Will Davison. He was officially out of the championship hunt yesterday after that ripper start. And then uh, running wide down at turn four was enough to put him out of shape. That's what happened to Paul Dumbrell on the second uh, replay. Not only is that horrible sound for Paul in the cockpit but also he well, he had another one on the way out but he also dragged down at turn five there was a lot of pebbles and stones and junk back onto the track as well. I heard his teammate also talking about it sounded like he said it was on seven cylinders. Not, not, good, not a good day for those fellas. So 11.6 seconds, winter bottom to uh, Richards. They're playing a longer run at the moment. They've got good car speed, so they, they could uh, jump up and be factors a little later in this. Talking about on the current pace of Mark Winterbottom, uh, he continues to be very, very fast at the head of the field. There's about a 45 second time loss to be able to get through uh, the pit lane, take your service, assuming that it all goes smoothly, and then pop back out. And um, let me see, 25, 30, 32, it's about 43, 44 second margin he's got at the moment. Sorry, I had to do the maths the hard way. I haven't got my calculator with me. But um, he's about 43, 44 seconds up on uh, on Tander at the moment. So he, he could pop out here and everyone will go, where did he come from? Well, I'll tell you exactly where he came from. He's got a margin at the moment and he's building it. Three here to finish off 2006. Maybe you jump out right in the lead, but you're just going to have to watch the trends here to see whether that's the case. But um, certainly won't be much in it. He's going to jump right into the middle of this little battle. So these guys are fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth on the road. Just to tag that remark, uh, Stephen Richards, his teammate, who's 1.8 seconds behind Mark Winterbottom, uh, will find himself mixed up in it as well. Hey Shed, turn six. 220-odd Ks on the exit there. This is where Winterbottom went off yesterday. Up the top, Luke Heights. This is second gear, 70 kilometres an hour. Little short shift, second to third. Don't use all the revs, otherwise it promotes too much wheel spin, too much sliding. Third to fourth for the final corner. You're going to have a quite a lengthy period of zero throttle to get the nose turned in. And you keep pushing, mate. The last of the cars are up getting now, mate. Grab six just before the Dunlop Bridge. 
then you get to that second of the white lines down there, depending on the wind direction and the grip levels, 280 kilometres an hour or north of that. Third gear turn two, this is where several people have been in trouble over the weekend. This was where Jason Richards went off yesterday. Fourth and, and turn three is one of the ripping great corners in this country. And a little oversteer moment right in the middle of it there for Jamie, who just had to catch the slide. He's doing that, I might mention, at just on 250 kilometres an hour in a one-and-a-half-ton car. Sounds easy. Amazing ride around this circuit. An incredible place. Here comes Tanda. Todd Kelly and Jamie Wincup. Winterbottom rejoins. Has to push Toddler out of the way, so he comes into third. What about that? What does that do for Jamie Winker? It pushes him one spot back. It, it certainly um, won't make him burst into laughter, but he's actually going to make a move here and gets it done quickly at uh, turn two. So problem solved for Jamie. So close at the top of this field. So that was a good strategy by FPR. And uh, he'll have good tyre condition when they come up to temperature and pressure, Mark Winterbottom. So it's actually going to be a little frustrating for him for a few laps because once the tyres normalise, he'll actually have more pace, mo most likely, than Jamie. And he'll want to climb around him. But from a forward standpoint, you know, it's not a good thing to do. Tom Gorman and Ray Price, the president of the Ford Motor Company Australia and his motorsport manager. It's kind of interesting too when you uh, compare the races so far of Tanda and Wing Cup in particular. In many ways, Tanda hasn't been challenged too much because he's been at the front. Oh, have a drink. Yesterday, he had to wait for Scaife. Scaife Got out of the way and Garth just had to keep his nose clean. Jamie Wincup, on the other hand, has had to fight for every position and he's doing a great job. Gee, Neil, you've got a great eye for pit stops. 4.2 seconds, that stop for Mark Winterbottom. The problem was that Frosty missed his mark. He went about a metre past where he should have stopped. The team had to quickly readjust and that's where that crucial second was lost. You can see that he arrived pretty hot. And... Uh... They rehearse that a lot to make sure that everything's in the right spot and you know, the tiniest shift of any of the apparatus that you need to make the pit stop just uh, makes it a slower stop, unfortunately. But uh, still came out in a very competitive position. Don't know that even if the stop was that fraction better, whether he would have prevailed over Tander and Todd Kelly. Incidentally, Stephen Richards, Jason Wright, Owen Kelly still not taken their compulsory stop so this battle that we're watching here is technically for fourth and fifth at the moment but revealed to be the lead battle very shortly Todd Kelly of course is the defending champion of this round he went from pole to victory in 2006 led the championship after round one in 2007 and it's been pretty much a scrap between Rick Kelly, Garth Tander Jamie Wincup and Craig Lowndes you hear the gentle progression of the, the throttle there in third gear coming off turn nine. It's gentle, gentle, 11 gentle. 11 laps to go. Have a drink. It's a great shot. Shows just how quick those cars roar down to turn one. This is where all the trouble was early in the race. I think everybody's come to terms with it now. Holden, Holden, Ford, Ford. just turned out to be about track position, not about absolute speed. I think just, you know, obviously the speed's different today than yesterday, but relative to each other, I reckon Jamie's car's a little bit stronger. He was a bit disappointed last night, but he didn't quite have the car pace when I spoke to him. You know, apart from the little snag they had in the pit stop, he, he didn't think they were really competitive enough. Actually, uh, 
just battle a little bit to get the car turned in there in Siberia. But I reckon today they have smartened the car up a bit. Jason Bright will come in on this lap in the Fujitsu entry for Brightek. He's second on the road at the moment. Managed to get the gear lever to do half the race. <laughs> Scaife is the fifth man in championship history to reach 200 starts. John Bow, of course, farewelling this category at the end of today with 225. Peter Brock, 212. Glenn Seaton, 205. Cito's here this weekend. Dick Johnson, 202. And now Scaife, 200. The interesting thing, Stephen Richards comes in. The next guy on the list, probably, in terms of starts, is Russell Ingle on 159. Looking for Van Ginsburg and mate, looking for Van Ginsburg and Tanto. Pops out about 16th or 17th thereabouts. So all the compulsory stops have now been completed. And all that debris has been taken out of the radiator intake for Stephen after he went across the paddock between turns one and two early in the race. Half a second is the official margin between Garth Tander and Todd Kelly. And then it's another 1.2 seconds back to Jamie Wincup, 0.4 then back to Mark Winterbottom. Next little battle's a good one as well, Scape and Lowndes. Remember they were locking horns here this time last year and Craig had a run up on the outside at Hayshed and it turned into a rally car temporarily. that uh, Mark uses the kerb at Hayshed and, and Craig doesn't on that occasion. Very often we've seen the Triple Eight cars be very good with their, the way they've behaved across the curbs over the season. <laughs> Rear brakes really locked on Lowndes' car as it plunged down the hill, searching high and low for a way around Scaife's car. Doesn't seem to have adapted nearly as well in this second race at Scaife car as it did yesterday. We've been talking how they have that spooky feeling about the points here this weekend. This is how they stand at the moment. With Gart Tander leading the race. He now has 610 for the year. A seven point swing for Jamie Winkup. Remember, Winkup had a seven point lead coming into this round. Oof, a little oversteer moment again for Craig Lowndes through turn one. significance of the seven points if it stays that way is that it really reduces the pressure on Tander going into the third race in terms of where he's got to finish. The gap is around about half a second. Jamie Wincup is third. If things stay the same to the end of lap 27, going into the final race, Gart Tander will have a seven point break over Wincup in the championship fight. Great job, mate. Think about your bars and bars. Lap times are interesting at this point. 37-2 for both Garth Tander and Todd Kelly and Jamie Wincup. They're, they're only split by the tiniest fractions and we measure out to the fourth digit after the decimal point with lap time. Can you believe that? Then Winterbottom did a 37-3, Scafe a 37-5 and Lowndes a 37-6. So nobody is blinking at the front of the field. And as I said, remarks a few minutes ago, the, the only thing that's really making a difference here in the end has been track position, because had Jamie Wincup been in a position to lead the field, it would be the other way around. It's that close. So Mark Winterbottom there in fourth. In fifth is Mark Scaife. Four tenths of a second or a fraction behind him is Craig Lowndes. And at this stage, Lowndes is 35 points off the championship lead. So yesterday there were four. We whittled it down to three. Going to race two by now. We're down to two because Lowndes will not have enough reach to be still in the picture. It's still a nail biter for race three no matter what because all sorts of weirdness can happen. Kelly on James Courtney, these fellas 7th and 8th, Will Davison behind them, Craig Lowndes in front of them. Oh. 
a bit of shock absorber problem with James Carr on Friday. They haven't quite had the pace. Seven to go, seven to go. James, Jim Stone there in the garage and Ken Douglas, technical director for that team who we've observed several times in the garage over the years. He's leaving the team at the end of uh, this weekend and he's going to the US. He'll be working with Marcus Ambrose in NASCAR competition and uh, reuniting that little technical partnership. Incidentally, Marcus not only contests the uh, Bush Grand National next year, but he has got a run in the main game for a dozen races as well. And that's uh, that's big time. That's a remarkable breakthrough for him. So congratulations to Marcus Ambrose for that. Siberia, turn five. Trying to keep the rear tyres alive. Rick uses third through there. oversteer moment through the final corner for Rick. Interesting to watch the cars elastic in and out. Rick's got some strength in a couple of places. James has got it in others. This whole HSV though have had the perfect start to the weekend. Rick Kelly took pole position. Garth Tander, the winner of race one and he now leads race two and leads the championship. If it stays the same, still six laps to complete. Stay nice and patient here, nice and patient, doing a great job. Make that five laps as they cross the control line. Jamie Wincup is third. The other guy who was in contention, Craig Lowndes, is sixth. Just having a bit of a look at the spread through the field here gives you an indication as to who is where down through the order to Courtney, to Rick Kelly, to Will Davison, and then to Lee Holdsworth. And I think a, a you know noteworthy performance for him for 2007 with a race win and, and some real glimmers of great performance from from Lee. He's in the top ten again, and you know he got that new car mid-year. He certainly had his ups and downs, but he, he's going to be a uh, one of the big names main one of the big names of V8 Supercar for a long while to come so I think he'll come away from the end of the weekend look back at this championship season as the one where he arrived on the scene. Both Will of these guys in fact yeah. probably Will Davison as well have had standout years you mentioned Lee he's up five spots on his 2006 championship Will Davison is also right up there as well he's up in the 10th year that for Will has included his highest ever qualifying, highest race and of course a Bathurst podium on a bad 07. Quieter race than I thought it was going to be. Margins at the front still 0.4 of a second. Here it is. Tander's got that extra comfort of the car between he and Jamie Wincup at the moment. Lap times 37.6 for Tander, 7.6 for Todd Kelly, 7.4 for Wincup. Showing a little bit more pace at the end. He has actually closed the gap. You can spot that. 
there's the split. It's dragging Mark Winterbottom along with him. Might be too little too late. Foot cam with Garth Tander heading to Hayshed. Not quite flat. But not far from it. Little heel and toe back to third. And just feeling the grip at the front of the car. Back to 100% super briefly. Carrying the brake all the way to the apex. short shift there, just kicks the clutch to get the gearbox, gear lever across the gate, second to third, fourth, and then just, the reason for the brake there is just to return a bit of load to the nose to get the car to turn in. If you don't brake at the final corner here sometimes, you just can't get the nose on line. Pluck six gear nice and early with the tailwind. This is going on, the bad sportsmanship flag for James Courtney blocking Rick Kelly. Look how judicious he is with the throttle at turn two. Long pause time there, and he just nails it. And this is a great corner. You've got to be very careful when you bring the brake percentage on here because the left side of the car is a little unweighted. If you, if you nail it too hard too early, as Rick did yesterday, it grabs and it'll cart you off the road. There used to be some nasty barriers and earth walls to the left down there and a few people over the years have had bell ringers down there as the cars have fired off to the left. Lowndes is having a pretty good look at Mark Scape and it was interesting Neil when we jumped out of the cockpit there of Garth Tander the top five had closed up a bit over Lukey Heights. A little bit of a lock up from Scape that's why Lowndes is ready to pounce. He's been a little uncomfortable and unhappy too. Here we go. Car 200, bad sportsmanship Still flag bad for blocking. Flag. Still get a bad sportsmanship flag, so just keep working on it. Two laps remaining when you come past. So he, Craig has been on the radio about it. The team have been working on it in pit lane as well. Mark will spot it this time through. Eight, three. Roland, sorry, Neil, the team boss, Roland Dane, has just said, well, it makes no difference. He's allowed a block under the rules for the next two laps. That's right. How's the moment again for Craig down at turn one? Yeah, so Roland's point there is it's come too late. But I don't, uh, I don't know that Craig's had the pace to climb over Mark in any case right at the moment. He's just not quite there. You never know though until they're released, until they're out from under the hot, dirty air of the preceding car. Still tightening up here. Look at this. It's been a funny trend through the year, hasn't it? The 888 cars in some circumstances have been very, very strong towards the end. One more spot for Jamie Winkup. One more spot for Wind Cup would make a big difference in his world. Yeah, we'll close the gap by a couple of points. Three. Isn't this amazing? We've got down to the second last race of the 2007 championship season. They've gone into this race equal on points. There's the bloke that's vying for the championship at the head of the queue and we're riding with the other fella. There's probably one and a half, maybe two final seconds lap, between them. Lap, it just, it's hard to imagine it being any closer than that. 0.3 is the official margin from Garth Tander to Todd Kelly and 0.4 back to Jamie Wincup. So it's three quarters of a second in it. And that was the bad sportsmanship play, of course, for Mark Scaife. He did right at the start. This race was all about position. In these dying stages, there's not much left on the table. Garth Tander has held his spot at the front. Todd Kelly has played a brilliant role in second. I wonder whether they chose to use uh, some scruffier tyres for this 
this race and they're all holding back some better rubber for race three. I mean, we've speculated about the wind, the temperature, the preceding uh, race rubber left on the road, but they're, they're in 37s and now even in 38s for the race leaders. So pretty slow pace and it's drifting at the back end of the race, which it typically does here, but quite a bit slower than yesterday. So for the fifth time in this season, Garth Tander will win the first two races of a weekend. Four of them, so just, there's nothing between them. And the championship is really going to go down to the wire. Because as they come around the final turn... Mega job, GC. Mega job. Box number two. Garth Tander is now officially the man to beat for the title. Todd Kelly second, Wind Cup third, Winterbottom, Scaife, Lowndes. That was Courtney going across in seventh. He held off Rick Kelly, Will Davison, and a top ten effort again from Lee Holdsworth. He's now got a seven-point buffer. Going into the final 27 laps of this season. And you would have heard it from the team radio. Box two ticked. What do they do at Triple Eight? Jamie Wincup started third. That's exactly where he finished. So that's your top ten. Mark Scaife holding down a top five performance in Craig Lowndes, as we mentioned. Now 35 points adrift at the championship leaders, so he can't make any more play for the 2007 title in terms of points. What impact will he have in the third and final race? Down to the bottom, we find those who didn't finish of Simon Wills, Cam McConville and Paul Dumbrell and also the other team BOC car.